G'day viewers, I'm Grouse and this is my garage. Today I'm working on X Popo. This is my VX SS Commodore X Highway Patrol that I purchased over 12 months now and have unfortunately done very little to it. As you can see, it's wedged into my garage with all of my home renovation stuff, which has consumed all of my time over the last 12 months. What I'm going to do today is dive into the transmission and see if I can get this car driving properly. I think it is the solenoids in the transmission, so I'm going to drain the fluid, change the solenoids, fill it back up, and I'm going to see how it drives. Now at the very end of this video, I have a really cool surprise. Something that takes this car back to its original Highway Patrol roots back in 2001. So stay tuned until the end of this video and check out the surprise I've got for this X Highway Patrol Commodore. I'm ready to go with first part of this job and that is to drain the transmission fluid now I'm getting a bit too old for crawling under cars dropping transmission pans and getting covered in ATF so now what I like to do is use one of these cheap pumps oil pump and I've got the inlet down the filler tube the dipstick tube and I've got the outlet into a 10 litre uh, oil waste container here. Now I've used this pump before to drain sumps, oil sumps, and it's really, really effective. So this is actually the first time I've tried it on transmission, so we're about to find out how it goes. So I'll flick the switch on the back there. Let the pump, oh look at that, straight away that transmission fluid is coming out, and that looks absolutely filthy. In fact, it looks so burnt that is uh, nearly uh, showing as engine oil and that's a very bad sign so it could be that this job of changing the solenoids is all in vain because the transmission is absolute toast but anyway i'm going to go through this process i'm going to drain this fluid and we're going to see what we get when we drop that oil pan Right, here I am under the car now. Uh, it's a tight squeeze under here. I uh, really wish I had a hoist, but that's a whole nother story. So here I am underneath, and what I wanted to show you is an absolute miracle. I have dropped the pan, and I've got it resting there just to drain off the remainder of the trans fluid. And the miracle is that I did not spill one single drop. And this is the first time I have ever drop the pan of an automatic transmission and I have watched plenty of videos and I've seen plenty of messes from guys dropping um, transmission pans and um, spilling fluid uh, and I literally first time have not spilled a drop and I just cannot believe it um, so there's the transmission I've still got to take the filter out I can see the solenoids on the end just there and they're the two that I'm going to replace and then put it all back together this job so far has been much easier than what I thought and I am really really pleased so let's continue I'm going to take the pan out I'm going to take the filter off give it a little clean and get those solenoids out all right guys it is a few days later now and I've got the pan off the transmission and I've got some interesting things to show you I've given that a really good clean that was actually full of sediment horrible looking sediment um, uh, it was basically resembling the same state as the fluid that you could see being sucked out of the dipstick tube here's my solenoids uh, I've taken both of those out they're just as grubby as everything else was in this transmission uh, I'm not even going to bother testing those I have got some brand new ones that I'm going to put in. And the other thing that I discovered, and this was really unexpected, was my manifold uh, pressure switch um, was absolutely cooked. The 
um, firstly, when I undid the five bolts to remove it, it was stuck tight to the transmission. When I managed to pry it free, it literally just disintegrated. And you can see, this is actually a plastic, the plastic cover for this component. Um, I actually thought it was a gasket because of the way it, it was it deteriorated and crumbled when I removed the component. Um, you can see that uh, it's actually really warped as well. You can see there um, from overheating maybe. Uh, I've, I've just not, I didn't expect to see that. I've, I've watched plenty of YouTube videos suggesting to remove it and clean it, which is exactly what I was doing. And I did not expect to see it in this state. There's even bits and pieces here that was stuck to the transmission when I removed it. And um, they're certainly not supposed to be separated from that. They're all supposed to be together as one. So I've ordered a new one of those. And I'm pretty confident that that is the reason why this transmission was failing. So I am going to put a new one of these in. I am going to put two new solenoids in, I'm going to put a new filter in, new pan gasket, refit the pan, fill it up with trans fluid, about six litres I removed in um, by dropping the pan, um, so put another six litres in and test drive it. I am ultimately going to rebuild this transmission. I'm not doing all of this expecting uh, a miracle cure. I am going to rebuild the transmission, you'll see that way later in one of my videos. But I'm just having a little bit of fun getting accustomed to working with these transmissions because I've not ever serviced a transmission before and I am going to go all the way and strip this 4L60E and rebuild it entirely in a future video on this channel. Stay tuned for that. Alright, let's um, put all this away now. I've got to wait for this part to come in and then I'm going to refit all this stuff. It's a few weeks later now guys and finally I've got a bit more wrench time on my hands. As you can see Expopo is even more squashed into Grouse Garage uh, because of all my home renovations but today it's wrench day and I'm diving back underneath. I've got my new solenoids to put in, I've got the new manifold pressure switch to put in, a uh, new filter, a uh, new pan gasket, top it up with fluid Let's get in and do that and see what we get. With all the parts laid out here in Grouse Garage, I'm ready to go. Here's my cleaned up transmission pan. Nice new gasket will go around on that surface there. Over here, I've got my uh, used solenoids. These ones are absolutely cooked. Here's my brand new ones. Nice and shiny. Very notable difference there. And as you can see, they are genuine GM parts. Over here now, I've got my pressure solenoid, pressure switch. And yes, oh yeah, it's well and truly destroyed. Here's my new one, ready to go in. Very notable difference between the two of those. And once again, look, I can't believe that, that was functioning in the car. Everything's laid out here, ready to go in. Let's get into it. And we're back under the car now. And just like that, everything's already done. I've got my 1, 2 and 3, 4 solenoids installed over here as you can see and I've got that manifold pressure switch installed there. Now is that enough to get this car driving properly? I don't know. I am hoping that this is going to fix everything and be the magic cure. So let's slap it all back together and find out. Fluid's topped up. I took six litres out, so I put six litres back in. I'm going to put the dipstick back in. Lock that one off. Got some other fluids here that I'm topping up on. Essential stuff in the grouse garage. Got to connect the battery back up. Um, I'm hoping it hasn't gone flat whilst I've been uh, working on the house and ignoring uh, Expopo. So we'll connect that back up and then I'm going to jump in and I'm going to fire it up while it's on the axle stands and put it through first, second, third drive and while it's still up on the stands, see what happens. Um, that'll also get that clean fluid through the filter and through the transmission. We'll see if there's any notable, notable difference um, doing that and then it's down off the stands and out onto the road. Okay, we've got lights on the dash, so we've got some juice in the battery. 
Uh, we're in park there. We're um, still up on the stands. Let's fire it up and uh, and see what we get. Ah, yeah. A little longer than a few minutes later. Wow, that started straight away. That's that's not bad at all, actually. One crank and it started. Got to love that. So no engine light. There wasn't an engine light before anyway, but um, after replacing a few of those electrical components, there's always a risk that there will be an engine light. Nothing that I can see there. Uh, hopefully we're not dumping a lot of transmission fluid underneath. I will jump out in a sec and check. And um, once it's warmed up for just a moment, we'll put it through its gears and we'll see what we get. Okay, so I've just taken my foot off the brake. We're in first. It shows that we're doing 20k an hour. I can hear the wheels turning around outside. Let's have a little look at that. Okay, so that's in first. I might leave that door open just to listen. Um, so, let's uh, put it into second. And... It's still showing 20k an hour in second. Just put it into third. Okay, that's gone up to 30k an hour. And then uh, I'll fill on the brake there. Put it into drive. up to 30 so there we go that appears to have been a successful test up on the stands in grouse garage which gave me confidence at this stage to drop it down onto the ground and clear away all my renovation material so that i could get ex popo out now the idea was that i'd reverse it out of the driveway here and head up the street now the street is a slight incline and so if I got stuck in any way I could easily just roll it back home and back into the garage. So that was the plan. Let's see how that all panned out and we'll find out if it was a success or not. All clear? Yep. And so reversing out of the driveway appeared to be very successful. In reverse it functions really well. Uh, at this point, you can hear I'm taking off in drive and something is definitely not right. When in drive and taking off, I, I don't know what it is. It just appears to have no power. Um, it's like taking off in second or third gear in a manual transmission. I just don't know what's going on there, whether it's the torque converter or the band or something else. At this stage here, I've put it into first and taken off and it appears to be driving okay. It's still not 100% right. It's still sort of lagging when it goes to take off, but there is a notable difference when you put it in first and take off. Now coming back now, you can hear the car's laboring when in drive and under acceleration. There's definitely something still not right. Down. That makes sense. Because taking off in drive, there's nothing, but you put it back into first and it takes off fine. And once you get up to speed and it's in drive, it, it drives perfect yeah. and it kicks down and drives fine. It's just just when it's taking off. So is it shifting? Oh yeah. So now oh, it's shifting. Yeah. Well, that's a good that's right. progress. Well, that's yeah, that's that's different. That's... So you put it in first and yeah. take off and it takes off fine, and then you get up to normal speed and put it into drive and it drives fine and, and it kicks down and. Thanks, son. And guys, that is a wrap. Did wrenching on X Popo have any improvement whatsoever on the way it drove? The answer is no, it did not. I was convinced that replacing those uh, one, two, three, four solenoids would completely transform the, the way the car drove and rectify all those problems, uh, but no, it did not. 
when I saw the pressure switch inside after dropping the pan, I was then convinced it would solve all of my problems and replacing that did um, nothing as well, uh, which I find very unusual. So plan B is to remove the transmission and do a full rebuild. That will be covered on this channel soon. I'm also going to pull the motor and I've got lots of goodies to go into that, including a big cam and, uh, and some other great stuff to, to match it. So that's all coming up on this channel. Um, the big surprise I said at the start of this video, well there you go, that's what it is. I have got the coolest um, police decal set made from an original set. These are magnets, so I can take and put them on and take them off whenever I like. Made from an original set of decals for this car. Uh, I've made a dedicated video to that. You can already see that on the channel. I'll link that one underneath um, so that you can view it. And thanks very much for watching my wrenching, guys. I'll see you again soon.